Hi everyone, Alec from Entopology. Today I'm joined by my colleague Yuki and we're gonna take a look at an automotive B pillar. And specifically, we're gonna go from the high level of looking at a nice generic vehicle. We're gonna isolate that B pillar. And then in the B pillar location, which is something that would normally be made from pressed steel or some more metal, we're gonna take a look at how we can do an optimization to make it a lightweight, variable shelled, as well as run the static SIM that's gonna drive these results. And to top it off, we're gonna take that static simulation and we're gonna use that to drive some wall thickness of our TPMS triple periodic minimal surface gyroid. So without further ado, let's take a look at this lightweight B pillar and the workflow of how we got here. Thanks, Alec. So if we take a look at our notebook over here on the left, this is our entire workflow we have set up in optimizing our B pillar. We first imported our part and then convert it into an implicit body, which is NTOP's native format, because when working this state, we have a lot of control over our geometry. Now, before we run our simulation, we would have to mesh our part. And then we would select our material. In this case, we're using aluminum 6061T6, which is one of the sample materials you can use when using N topology. Now you can also define your own material by adding in your Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio in the isotropic linear elastic property block. And lastly, we would add in our force and our supports because we are running a static analysis. And once we have all of our simulation input set up, we are then able to run our initial static analysis to get our displacement and our stress results. Now I can take the data that Yuki has made in his initial static analysis, and we can use that to drive the wall thickness of our B pillar. And why this is important is because we can make this a nice iterative approach to finding the optimal wall thickness. So here we have the initial static analysis and the stress field from it. And I'm gonna make these much thicker where I have the higher stresses and then where I don't have such high peak stresses and the stresses are considerably lower, we can make a nice thin wall structure and have a smooth taper as we cross section down this beam, seeing the areas of highest stress from my von Mises and seeing well that correlates to the wall thickness. As we move down in the notebook and we get to a revalidation here, now that we've hogged out all this material, I wanna know what effects it's had on the main crash structure or B pillar. And of course we can take this and we can rerun a SIM. And now that we have this validation, we can use that to drive where we wanna have extra support via our TPMS structures. So you'll notice I have this inner volume on the left-hand side of my screen. And when I isolate this, I wanna actually use that as my target area to infill with lattice. And this is a nice way to approach something that we're gonna additively manufacture. Maybe we're doing this on site, Maybe we're you doing this uh, you know, months ahead of time from a car's debut. What's important though, is that I'm in control of all of the unit cell types. So this could be something as simple as our gyroid, or we could go ahead and change our TPMS unit cell types with this dropdown variable. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool way to approach design because I don't need to be an expert at the actual manufacturability. I can pass that off to my manufacturing engineer and he can actually tell me some feedback as a design engineer, how we can make this better, make it lighter and make it more manufacturable. And Yuki is now gonna to talk to you about our whole encapsulated part and how that reflects in the design. Now with all of our simulation driven designs complete, our variable shell and our variably thickened TPMS, we can bring it all back together using a Boolean union block. Then we can mesh and export our optimized B pillar to manufacture. Now, why would you want to do this? It's lighter, it's strong, and it's great for low production vehicles R&D setting and can also be applied to a higher production car. These same principles we use to lighten the B pillar can also be applied to non-crash members such as a battery box in the EV market. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to download and open up the file to take a look at how we created this workflow. See how fast it updates the model when changing a couple of inputs. Thank you. If you enjoyed today's video on the B pillar and want to learn more, set up a demo at anthropology.com, get a demo, and simply fill out the form to speak to an NTOP expert. If you're already an existing user and want to dig deeper, 
Check out support.anthropology.com and use the search bar to ask your questions. Thank you.